Got it. Okay, so who has seen The Hunger Games? Raise your hand. Who has read the books? Who has no idea what's going on? Okay, okay. Okay, now who's seen the books and who's seen, okay, who has either read the book or seen the movie? Okay, that's two thirds, maybe. All right, okay. And I got my fans, so okay, I'm okay. All right, now, um, so we'll be discussing, as I said, throughout the whole lecture. Afterwards, we'll be talking, you know, about it, or if you want to talk about, like, random stuff, you know, like Doritos and Starburst and, and whatever, or whatever is on your mind, um, just let us know, and then we'll talk about that, inshallah. Um, okay, so now the Hunger Games, for those who don't know, and to be honest, like a month ago or so, I didn't know what it was about either, right? And I thought it was about like food, you know? <laughs> they got a hungry people who want some food and it's like surviving to grab the last apple or something. Um, which was not the case, which is kind of weird. Uh, and so I saw the trailer and I was like, this looks really bad. And then, <laughs> but then I went to like Rotten Tomatoes and like, uh, what is it, Metacritic? Metacritic, yeah. And so there was like great reviews. I was like, okay. So I got sold with the reviews. It's very sad. Uh, and so then I went to watch it and it, it was pretty good. And, um, the reason why I chose this topic, I, you know, the, this movie, this book is very popular right now, very hot right now. Um, so I assume that a lot of people are really into it. And um, the main theme I would gather from this movie is survival, right? Um, because, you know, the people who go into the movie, who go into the, who are in the movie, in the districts, okay? And we'll talk about districts in a minute. They are, they have no choice basically to come in and survive. They have to survive. They have no choice. And that's kind of the way of this dunya, of this world. You have to survive, right? You have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to keep going until you die. We survive all the time. Um, you, right now, you guys are in college, and bettering yourself, getting education, so you can have livelihood, and you can have families, inshallah, and all these things. So, a little bit of background. Where does this take place, the Hunger Games? What, what time, time, 1900s, now, when does it take place? In the future, right? Okay, so basically what happens, what I know, is North America got destroyed by like 10 disasters, right? Like everything came at one time or came after a series of time and destroyed North America. And so then it, um, it became this new country or place called? Canada. Good, see? Come on guys, I'm pointing here and they're, they're answering, okay? All right. So, how many districts are there in this country? Ooh! Ooh! See now, see now, that's the movie versus the book, right? Okay, right. So why are there 13 and why are there 12? It used to be 13. 13 was Wait, are we supposed to kill like the third book? <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. I won't kill it. Don't say anything else. It's too late, it's done. Okay, so anyways, uh, why is it, why is it uh, 12 and 13? Why are two numbers? One got destroyed. One got destroyed, right? Okay. Supposedly. Supposedly. Okay, now they really are telling you now. Okay. Um, so what's, uh, so now there are how many? How, how many are there? There's 12, right? Everyone agrees 12 districts. Okay. Now, what about the capital? Say about the capital. They're mean, they're rich. What else? <laughs> they're one percent aristocratic. Oh, vocabulary must be must be a. What's your major? Business. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Unexpected. Unexpected. <laughs> this is major too. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So it's very bougie place, high class people. They don't really care about anybody but themselves. Um, and there was a dark days, right? The uprising. You know, where the rich people and the the were living, living very lavishly, and the poor people kind of had this revolt. And the 13th district was gone, at least to our knowledge, right? It's gone. And then they had a treaty of treason or something that was signed to safeguard peace and thus start the Hunger Games. Right, okay. So now, 12 districts. Now let's see who's really smart in here about this stuff. Who can name 12 districts? And the numbers, numerically. District one. Okay. District two. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, come on. Give me, give me the. Can anyone do like one is this, two is this, three is this, four is this? 
Okay, 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 okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get <laughs> Open the can of worms. Okay. Alright, guys. Just relax. Don't worry about it. It's okay. After the lecture, you can have, you can think about it. Alright. But the important ones are like 11 and 12, right? That's like the cooler ones. <laughs> One was the rich one, see? There you go. That's my happy people, my advisors, the Shura Council. Okay. Now, what do we learn about this? There's 12 different districts, right? You have masonry, you have mining, agriculture, grains, textile, lumber, transportation, all these different things, right? And some are more bougie and some are more modest, right? So, what do we learn about this? Why are there 12 different districts? Why would there be? Resources come from different places. Yeah. And but don't we need all these things? Yeah. Right? Like if we had like if we had like a hundred doctors, right? And we need to build a building, what would happen? <laughs> They'd be helping each other, like, oh man, I broke my arm. Okay, let me help you. You know, this will keep happening again and again. So we have to have like everybody in different fields. And um there is a hadith, Ra'ah al-Bukhari, in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu um, talks about Prophet David, alayhi salam, right? And he said that nobody has ever eaten a better meal than that which one has uh, earned by working with one's own hands, right? And so, you know, you learn, like, the Prophet of Allah, David, alayhi salam, used to eat from the earning of his own labor. You know, how, how much importance, importance Islam puts on making sure that you work and you earn a living um, is very important for us. And we should appreciate anyone and everyone's contribution to society, right? One time, you know, I was at this uh, event and this guy, uh, this guy was very, very well qualified. He worked for President Clinton. Um, and he said basically that, you know, we have people, it's good people have degrees, but we have to also respect people who don't have degrees and providing us services that we need as well. You know, it's very important to always remember that because sometimes, you know, in academia and we get all, all these, our degrees and stuff, we get advanced, we start thinking that, you know, we're better than somebody else because we have education. Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, you know, we should always remember that everybody has their own uh, traits they can help us with. So, now, we're going to go into characters, all right? Now, who can tell me about Gail Hawthorne? <laughs> All the girls like, as us. <laughs> so who knows, who knows about Gail? Uh, girl side. He's cute. He's cute, okay. <laughs> what, what, what's his role in the story? What's his role in the story? He's her best friend, like, lover. <laughs> 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 he's like an independent thinker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in the movie, it doesn't really show them, like, um, lovey-dovey yet. Maybe it happens later. It probably does. Uh, but, you know, you can tell that, you know, he kind of he kind of likes her, in a way. Right? In the movie, at least. Probably in the books, too. Um, and, you know, that's something very important. Omar Merchant, what is up, my friend? Assalamu alaikum. Good to see you, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, with guys and girls, you know, if you have friends who are guys and you're a girl or vice versa, you know, even though you're just friends, there may be some chemistry like hiding somewhere, right? So just be careful because stuff happens and one leads to two and two leads to five, right? So um, be careful. All right. Now, uh, President Snow. President Snow. The guy's a douche, right? He's a total douche, like in the movie, probably in the books too. Like you, from the get go, you see him. He is the old guy, right? The president. Okay, I don't know. Okay, and so um, it makes it known that he's, he's like a bad person, right? And but at the same time, he's like the leader of the people, you know. And there's this tension you see between the people as it, as the movie goes on, uh, between the leader and the people. And keep keep that in mind. All right, Seneca Crane. And if I'm mispronouncing this, let me know, and I'll, I'll correct myself. Seneca Crane, um, what's he like? 
Is that the guy with the cool beard? That's what I'm talking about, man. It's in my notes. <laughs> the guy has such a cool beard. I was like, man, how can I get my beard like that? You know, it'd be so cool. So he had this really cool beard, right? And he has, you know, whatever. And then um, he's like the puppet master of the whole operation. So he'll like, you know, see the movie, you see it, he'll like push like fireballs or something and he'll push like monsters and stuff and he'll kind of try to control the situation. Um, but you see that, you know, one of the characters we'll talk about in a little while, Katniss, right? She's like the main <coughs> heroine of the movie. You know, she goes through this as well. Um, different types of trials throughout the entire movie, right? Like her family life's very hard. You know, her father passed away, um, I think in a mining accident, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then her mother went through this big depression and she really didn't talk at all. And then, you know, so it was her and her little sister. You know, and they live in a very modest district, so it's very hard for them to, you know, to survive. Um, but you see throughout the movie that every stage, beginning, middle, and end, she's always finding ways to survive, no matter what. From the beginning, in the middle, uh, in which she's fighting, building alliances, talk about that in a little while, uh, one with the little girl, and then with, with Pita. Pita is his name? Okay, yeah, Pita, and uh, so weird. And then, uh, uh, you know, so on and so forth, right? She keeps surviving. And then if you look, um, if we revise Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah in the 214th ayah, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مستهم البأس والضراء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين منوا معه متى نصر الله that, or do you think that you will enter paradise while such trial has not come to you as to those who passed on before you? They were touched by poverty and hardship and were shaken. They were shaken until even the mes their messenger and those who believed with him said, When is the help of Allah? Unquestionably, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers, The help of Allah is near. So no matter what happens in this life, you have to still keep surviving and keep going. Because it's not going to be this pretty Bollywood picture, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, you know, fields and like pretty dresses and, you know, green eyes and all these things, right? <laughs> it's, it's not like that. It, it's tough. Stuff's going to happen in your life. But you have to keep struggling and keep moving forward. Um, it's very important. And it's throughout this whole movie that that's, uh, that uh, kind of theme is there. All right, so the guy with the name, Peter, Peter Millark. So who is this guy? The bread guy. The bread guy, right? <laughs> so he's like the bread man, gingerbread. <laughs> so he's, you know, he passes, he works at a bakery store, or something, bakery, right? And um, apparently his first interaction with Katniss is they throw his bread at her. <laughs> you know? When she was starving. When she was starving. It was like raining. It was like a dramatic scene, you know? It's not like... And you know, it was like this dramatic scene. He throws bread, and he sees her again. He's like, "Yeah, you probably hate me because I didn't give you that bread by by hand. I should give it to you by person, you know, in person." Um, you know, so that's kind of messed up. You know, that actually happened one time when I was in Mecca, believe it or not. And like, they were like passing out like iftar like that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. They're like, you know, those like like Happy Meal iftar. They always throw it at you. And I'm like. Seriously? <laughs> throw my food at me? And they do that. So, but I guess it's, they get the reward for it, inshallah. Um, yeah, they you know, break my fast you know, with, with his food. So. Um, so anyways, but you also see this kind of survival instinct in PETA as well, right? You see how he like smoothes the audience when he goes to that one MC host thing. What's it called? Is there, does it have a name? Where they go to when they all like go and they talk in front of the audience with that one host. What's it? The talk show. Is it called something? Interviews? Whatever it is. Anyways, but he's like, you know, smell me. Does smell like roses? You know, he's, he's kind of like moving the crowd. Um, and also he has that instinct where he kind of like covers himself in camouflage and then he kind of hides and stuff. It's kind of cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, 
So, okay, now this next name I need help with. The blonde drunk guy from White Man Can't Jump, I think. <laughs> that was him, right? I think that was him. Yeah, that's him. Hamish. Hey, Hamish hey, Abernathy? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, he's like District 12's only Hunger Games victor, I believe, before these two, right? Yeah. And what's his problem? Dude drinks all the time, right? He's always drinking throughout the entire movie. Um, but what else do you notice about him? He's the only, okay, yes. He has good intentions. Good intentions, right. And what else? What else do you know? What's he good at? Surviving. Surviving, yeah. He's, he, won, he won the championship. And if, and if you look like deeper into the readings, back then, uh, if I'm wrong, let me know. But from what I read was is that he, like, when he did Hunger Games, there was more people, like 40 people involved or something? 25? There was more people, more people I think, than, than the regular number. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like, you know, he was, he was made, you know, he was like really good at what he does, right? But we learn from this is that we don't judge people, okay? It's very important. Just because they're doing one sin, even though it's a really bad sin, and okay, we're on video and y'all are my witnesses. I am not condoning drinking alcohol, <laughs> all right? Ain't nobody going to say a deal gave fatwa the other day that you can go drink <laughs> on Friday or Thursday night, Hoika. Tiff Streets. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. It's a very bad sin and it's against our religion. But we do not judge people, right? We got a lot of judge, or if there's a Qadi, like a real judge in town, then let him do judging or something. Um, <laughs> but we don't judge. And we find that there are people that can be good at one thing, even though they're sinning. And if you work with them and you talk to them and you try to help them, inshallah, maybe they'll give up what they're doing by seeing your example. I've seen it happen many, many times in my life. People will just give up because they see someone else not doing it, and they're like, man, I'm going to be like her. I'm going to be like him. There's one scholar, uh, Dr. Farhad Hashmi. Have you all heard of her? Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. So she like, um, and she's excited. Okay. <laughs> Good, mashallah. You know, so she's like in Pakistan, uh, or at least was. Maybe she's just, I'm not sure if she's still there or not, but she also established a school in Canada, right? And I talked, so one, of her, one of her students, or former students, is a classmate of mine at Hartford Seminary. And she's like, when Furhat used to talk, we used to take off our jewelry and donate it. SubhanAllah, can you imagine that? I mean, they're sitting in the classroom and she's talking about, I'm, I'm sure Islam or charity or something, and they're just taking off their jewelry and they start donating. Just again and again and again. You know, sometimes people's teaching or their character or the way they are can influence other people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hujrat that, Oh, you have believed, Ya Yahudin Amanu, let not a people ridicule another people. Perhaps they may be better than them. Right? Sometimes we're like, Man, did you see that guy? Or did you see that girl the other day? But they were doing this, they were doing that. They talk about it openly. But you never know what's happening on the inside. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really knows, right? And maybe these two angels that are recording, right? Good and bad, you know, and stuff. So. Only Allah knows. So let's be careful in writing myself to before we judge people. But in case something does happen and we say some stuff like we backbite about people for some reason, uh, Mufassirin, the scholars of tafsir of the Quran, they say to what one, uh, one cure for this is that you. It's a guy from the video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. The scholars of the Quran, they say that if you backbite about someone, right? Okay. So if I say like bidat is something, right? And it's something he doesn't like me to say. Okay? Then the scholars say the cure for this is to say something midat likes in the same audience. Right? You get it? So if I say midat, you're horrible at football. But you're really good at basketball. <laughs> right? And he'll be like, yeah, you know. And so that's how, that's the, that, that, that's, the, that's the cure, right? All right, now, there's this guy, Cato, right? And in the movie, they kind of like build him up to be like the best. You know, he's, he's going to come and he's going to win. And we'll talk about him near the end of the, the contest. But um, what do you notice about his, his upbringing? How, what happened with him? He was taught to fight, right? He was like built to compete, right? You know, and uh, but then we'll talk about that what happens at the end of the movie as well. Okay, now who is Rue? 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> who's who's Rue? Girl. The little girl, right? Right. Okay. Um. And she's from District Eleven, right? Now, what do you notice about District Eleven, District Twelve? Yeah, and they have a lot of what? Camaraderie, right? Almost like they have like a group alliance, like district alliance. Not just in the two, two girls, but two ladies, but they have an alliance together. And you learn from this, what we can learn from this, is that, um, you know, as Muslims in America, we're living as minorities, really just minorities, right? And we're not like 98% of the population, are we? Last time I checked, it wasn't that. <laughs> Less than, you know, something, you know. But that, that, that's, that's not the case, right? But when you are a minority, it's very advantageous for us to work with other minorities, okay? Especially on like-minded efforts, you know? Even if you don't agree with some things they do or whatever, but on things that maybe the Muslim community is concerned about and they're concerned about, start working with them. Right? And you can start doing that while you're in at UT. Okay. You know, if there are groups on campus that are have like minded efforts, whether it's civil rights, whether it's um, reputation or, or, or whatever it is, uh, community service, anything that you can work with other people, go ahead and do that, inshallah. Start building bridges, right? And I'm sure you guys do that already. Okay. You guys are pretty cool. All right, top three MSAs. I'm not going to say anything more because I'll get in trouble because it's being recorded, but I'll say top three. Okay. All right. And uh, what time is it, by the way? No, no, no. UT, what time is it? <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. Okay, okay, don't worry. We'll, we'll say it loud. Okay. All right. So, what about Katniss? Who's, who's, our, who's our heroine? Who's Katniss? Katniss Everdeen. Guys. Yeah. She's brave, but doesn't mean to be. She's a hunter. She's a hunter, yeah. That's good. Hunter. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and we also, what, what happens when, when uh, her father passes away? She has to, like, take care of the family because her mom doesn't. Take yeah, she takes care of the family, right? Okay, and then what happens at the reaping, reaping day? What happens then? She volunteers. She volunteers. That's a big scene, right? <laughs> Even the trailer, I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> like, I volunteer. <laughs> okay. You know, and so then she volunteers. Now, I could not find a better hadith than this hadith from the Prophet, where he said, La yu'minu hatakum, hatta yuhibba li akhihi, ma yuhibbu li nafsihi. Ruwah al Bukhari wa Muslim. That none of you truly believes until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Or your sister what you love for herself. Right? I mean, seeing her little sister about to get probably killed, chances are, and she's like, no, I'll go. You know? And herself, she's, not, she's never really killed any, anybody, I don't think. Any human being, you know, besides animals. But she does that. Right? And sometimes, you guys have siblings, ladies, gentlemen, you have siblings, or you're going to become a father, inshallah, or a mother, inshallah, or taking care of people, you have to step up to the plate, you know, and become that leader of the family. It may happen, so be ready for it. All right, now this name, I have no idea how to pronounce. Is it Sina or China? Sina. Sina, see? I have no, Sina, okay, now who's Sina? Like the stylist, right? Like the stylist. So, um, and and what is, what is his role with, with Katniss besides just styling? What else, what else does he do? He's like, like a mentor. It's like a mentor, right? What else? Makes her cool. She allows her to make an impression. On All right, right. Advising her. Okay. What's Katniss feeling like during this whole this whole tournament? Scared. She's pretty scared, right? She's and, and how does he make her feel? Reassuring. Reassuring, right? Kind of calms her down. The Prophet ﷺ is um, reported to have said in the Sunnah of Abi Dawud, Al Mu'minu Mara'atul Mu'mini. The believer is the mirror of the believer. Right? The mirror. Right? So, like, what does that mean? That means, Midat, I'm picking on you, okay? Because you're right in front of me. All right. So, that means, Midat, 
If I ask you, how are you doing? What do you say? How are you doing? <laughs> okay, all right. I ask you, I ask you, how are you doing? Well, how are you? Okay, and what else do you say? Sorry, I'm doing well. What do you usually say? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good. Now, if you're doing bad, and I ask you, how are, how are you doing? What do you say? Am I doing too well? You say that? Okay, but do you still say, do you still say Alhamdulillah? Okay, what I'm trying to get with this is a lot of the times with Muslims, right? And Preacher Moss talks, you know Preacher Moss? Oh yeah, he's a friend of mine. So, he talks about this. He's like, he's like, Muslims, you never know. And see, okay, y'all witnessing, I'm, I source my jokes. I don't like say, this is my joke and I just you know, say it. He's like, Muslims, you never know how they're really feeling, right? I said, hi, their day is going good, how you doing? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> day is going bad, how you doing? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and so you never really know, like, yes or no. But how do you know? Right? Okay, at the end of the joke, how do you know? <laughs> by their facial expressions, by their body language, right? If your day is going bad, and I say, how you doing? You're like, alhamdulillah. <laughs> you know? Or if your day is going good, alhamdulillah. Right? <laughs> it's the same word I'm saying, right? Same word, but the way I say it, you know? So be, look, look out for your fellow classmates and friends. You know, see how they're really, question. Aren't you supposed to, like, aren't you, the reason why you say Alhamdulillah is because you are supposed to be happy no matter what. Like, you're not happy, but you're supposed to be thankful no yeah. matter what. Yeah. So even if you, like, you know, like, I guess it's kind of contradictory to just be, like, moping and then say Alhamdulillah because you don't actually mean that you're being thankful. Yeah. Well, you see, Alhamdulillah, like, the Muslim, the Muslim, viewpoint, right, is you're always winning. It's never a loss. Why? Because if you, if Allah tests you and you're patient, you get reward. Or your sin gets removed, right? There's a hadith from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, anha where um, she reports Prophet said that, you know, that when we, when we, um, any affliction happens to us, even if like a thorn hits our foot and we're patient, Allah makes it an expiation for our sins. You know? So either we're getting reward, we're getting our sins removed, something is happening, even in the worst situations. Okay, so we're always winning. It's never like a loss. We're always winning. Alhamdulillah. Right? So, um, but when you see someone is still needs some help, then you talk to them. One time, I saw one of one, someone I knew, right, close to me, and I, I looked at him. We were at like um, this cafe, La Madeline. Yeah, yeah that place. <laughs> yeah. And so we went to La Madeline, and then um, I, I was looking at him, and I was like, dude, this dude is not feeling good. I was like, hey, what's on your mind? You know, so I was all casual, you know, chaplains try to be cool. So what's, what's on your mind, you know? And then he's like, mm, nothing. And I kept looking at him. He's like, it's complicated, you know? It's a loaded, loaded thing, it's complicated, it's very, very ambiguous. But what happened was, is three, four weeks later, that person called me and texted me, I need to talk to you, right? So if he just had been like, you know, it's complicated, I'd be like, okay, cool. So how's, how's, uh, how's school going? How's UT? Or how's yeah, UT Austin? How's, uh, how's NBA? How's NFL, right? Then maybe he wouldn't say anything after that, right? But I was, I was looking at him and trying to See what's going on with you, you know. It's very important. You never know what impact you can have on somebody just by saying how are you doing and really meaning it and following up with that. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry I get serious and I get happy. Then I so it's okay. We'll keep going. Um, so, the reaping day. Now, what's the reaping day about, ladies? Now, the reaping day. What happens? Right. So you got 12 districts, one boy, one girl, fight to the death, organically one winner. Right? Only one winner. It's supposed to be. Okay. Now, if whoever wins gets a nice luxury life, like the capital people. That's what I, that's what I gather. And um, 
Now, there was a time where the Prophet saw a salam, now I'm going to quiz you guys. I'm going to stop talking so much. I'm quizzing you now. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that if he could go back in time or, you know, if he, could, if he could join this group that was part of a social justice, economic fairness, what was this group called? No, you can't answer. I'm, I'm, I'll get to you in a minute. Okay, now, uh, Alliance of the Virtuous, right? Well, what was the, what was the Arabic name? Does anyone know? The Hilf al-Fudul, right? And so this was an alliance that was done pre-Islamic, you know, that was based on economic fairness, you know. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, I would have joined this, okay? Even though it was secular in nature, but it was a, a pact that was built on um, fairness for the society. So, you know, if you have things on campus or here that you can benefit other groups or benefit the community, go on and do that. Even if it's not Islamic by name, you know, go out and help. And people will see that just by you doing that, like, oh, okay, Muslims do some good stuff, you know, and they'll be very happy to see that. It, it, I promise it'll happen, inshallah. All right, this train ride. <coughs> what happens in the train ride? We have two main characters, right? PETA and Katniss. Okay, and third guy. And I'm not talking about, I'm not going to mention the girl with the whole outfit because I really don't know what her uh, purpose is. So I'm not going to, we're going to skip over her. Okay, so we have, the, we have the trainer and we have the two, the boy and the girl, right? Okay. Now, what's on this train? Fancy things. Fancy, fancy things, right? Food, what else, what else do you see there? Is this all there? Is this food? Yeah. Pretty much food, right? Hunger Games. <laughs> Is there alcohol? Yeah, alcohol. Thank you, brother. Okay, so there's alcohol, there's food, and it's not, it's not sweets, and it's not just like bread and meat, you know? Not like roti, kima, kebab. It, it, it's, it's, it's like some intense stuff, right? And um, the setting is pretty nice, too, right? It's not a ghetto train. It's a really nice train, right? And... That's also, what does that remind you of? The capital. The capital, okay. What about, what about in your own life? What does that remind you of? Reminds me of Eid. Eid? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you do Eid? <laughs> I need to come to your Eid prayer. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, this life is like that, right? Isn't this life like that? Fancy cars, big houses, swag. <laughs> right? Isn't that his life is about? You see, oh man, got that car, they roll up, or not condoning again, but in rap videos, how they think, what they talk about, you know? Rolling, <laughs> flossing, swag, all these things, right? That's what they talk about, right? But, you know, one, uh, one scholar um, from Al-Andalus, Imam Ibn Hazm, um, he was like, you know, one of his like, pep talks, his, his writings, he really like, like, like pep talks. They're like, you know, these things in this world, they're going to leave you one day, right? You're going to die, and either someone's going to sell it, the government's going to take it, <coughs> but you're not going to take it with you, you know? Sometimes we get so caught up in the worldly things that we're just like mesmerized. Like, man, if I don't have that, I'm not as cool. I'm not as good. I'm not like achieving. But the real achievement is the akhirah. Right? That is where it's at. You know? And the same scholar talks about the akhirah. He's like, if you give up the akhirah for the dunya, it's like, man, you blew it. You're crazy. Why would you do that? Why would you give up all of this? Infinity for this. This. Why? Right? So remember, rem always remember that. You know, if you ever get caught up in the dunya, like, man, remember that. Another thing we re realize about that train ride is that it's temporary. You know, it's one point and then it ends. It's gone. Just like the dunya, you know. And then they also have a time in that, in that, in that in the movie where, um, yeah, question? Oh, no, okay. okay, in the movie where um, they um, start 
Okay, yeah, can we, uh, after this question, inshallah, after this one, we'll add questions at the end, inshallah. Cool? Okay. So, um, like Janazah, right? When we have the funeral prayer, we wash the bodies, we cover the body, perfume the body, bury the body, right? These times, temporary times, you go from A to B. Now, depression. Who's depressed in this movie? Yeah. Katniss' mom, Kamish, right? You know, and, and depression is, is really something that can hit you, right? Like the brother had in the movie. Um, that was your movie, right? Was the, depressed, the guy is depressed about his, his brother? Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Oh, sir. Mashallah. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, you know, we all go through depression, right? And in, like, the Muslimish culture, it's kind of, like, taboo, right? Mm, you know, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, right? <laughs> so, you know, we don't talk about it. Thank Allah. Sabr of Allah. You know, have patience. Qadr of Allah. Decree of Allah. You know, it's okay. But, you know, we also have to seek counseling or seek some help, right? And you got, like, Sheikh Omar here. He's pretty cool, you know? Mashallah, he's right here on campus. Just talk to him about something, you know? Um, Sheikh Islam's also here, a little more north. And he's also, I've, I've heard very good things about him. You know, talk to people, whoever you have, or friends. But don't let it, like, sit inside you, right? That's dangerous. Let, tell me, what happened when the Prophet Sallallahu had his first revelation? What happened to him? He went to Khadija. He went right to Khadija, right? And what did he do? Did he just go to sleep? No. So some, he talked to Khadija, right? He told her what happened. He said, look, this is what happened to me, and I'm, I'm having some problem with it. I'm having a pro uh, some trouble internalizing what just happened to me. You know, so some, he had an angel come to him, right? An angel come telling him to read. I don't know how to read. Iqra, read. I don't know how to read, right? Read, and then finally, read in the name of Allah who created you. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Right? So he read, he told his wife. And what did Khadija do after that? She seeks counsel from another friend. Yeah, that. But right then, what did she do? She consoled him. She consoled him, right? He said, Look, you're a good person. God loves you. You're going to do great things. You're going to be a great prophet. You're not a bad person. You're good to people. It doesn't happen to you. You're okay. You know? So. Always, don't keep in things inside you, right? Whoever you have, you have your family, you have friends, you have a, cha a chaplain, you have a imam, you have counselor, therapist, whatever you have, go out and seek that. Okay, now, who are the sponsors? What's the purpose of a sponsor in this movie? To say something needed. Mm-hmm. Right, so say, what, what do they provide? Yeah. Like? Medicine. 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 Food. 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 Knives. Right? <laughs> That's what they do. Okay. It's the Hunger Games, right? They're, they're fighting. Why is it called Hunger Games? Okay? Someone explain that to me. I don't, I don't understand that. Why is it called Hunger Games? The winning district gets um, food, uh, extra rations of food for the next. See, no one told me that in the movie, right? <laughs> Read the book, okay. <laughs> no, I, I, have to, I have to pass my classes. You guys can read it and tell me what it says. Okay. And you have to pass too, I know. Um, all right. So, you know, we. Sponsorship is important, right? And if you look at most um, nonprofit organizations throughout the states, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, they have sponsorships of some sort, corporate sponsorships, community donors. So it's very important, you know, that we have that um, practice in Islam. You know, uh, Uthman radiAllahu ta'ala an, who's Uthman ibn Affan? Who is he? Khalifa, right? Leader of the Muslims, right? Um, you know, one time he gave so much charity Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, anything with man does after this, he's forgiven, right? Because he's just emptying out his pockets, you know, for the sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You know? Abu Bakr is also mentioned to be, be very charitable as well. Okay, now, with Katniss, how does she survive this whole operation? You know, she has this guy, the, the, what's this guy's name, the drunk guy? Kamish. Okay, Kamish, right, I'm judging now. Okay, um, and then we, uh, there's Rue, right, too, okay. And then PETA, right? PETA Malark. Okay. So we learned that we can't do stuff alone. No matter how cool you are, or we think we are, right? We can't do stuff alone. We always need support and help. 
if Kobe Bryant <laughs> came on the court and he had to play any basketball team in the NBA, I mean the worst team. I'm not going to say the name, but John I'm talking about. Okay? The worst team in the NBA. Oh, come on! <laughs> Basically complete. No way. Okay, but let's say. Right? Any team, whatever. Can he beat them by himself? Yes. Yes. Come on, seriously? Five people on one person? <laughs> okay, whatever. But you guys get my point, right? Okay. All right. No, he cannot. He cannot be the single handedly. Nobody can beat, not even Michael could beat five people, five NBA players. <laughs> now, now, I'm ready to argue that too. Okay. Now, what about the cornucopia? What was that? Mm. to get their sympathy so they're actually pretending to get by to survive mm. and I think that's kind of a negative moral they're like mm. they have to pretend to be one of the one of those people to get their approval to make it in this world mm. that's a good point I like it I like it all right thank you what? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, the cornucopia is, uh, what, what is it? No, in a movie, what is it? <laughs> no, like, like what, what's, what? It's what, all what, the good stuff. It's all the good, where all the goods are, right? I'm a smart guy in my show in the back. Subhanallah. <laughs> okay, so it's... <laughs> It's where all the like, it's where all the, uh, the goods are, right? And, um, you know, at this point, they really have to get these goods to survive, right? But what happens to, this, to these goods? They get blown up. They get, but blows them up, right? It's like a master stroke. I was like, what is she doing? She hits the apple, right? Is it the apple? And I was like, what's going on? And then, do do do, do do do. I was like, oh, all right. You know, that's some, you like that, Raphael? Yeah, okay. I'll give a shout out in a minute. Okay, but, um, you know, that was a very smart move to survive. So, now they're going through this whole, like, thing in the jungle or forest. What is it? Forest. Forest, right? And so they're fighting and they're surviving. And then there's that, that, that ne bad team with Kato. Right, his team, and then Katniss is like, "Oh man, how am I gonna do this?" Right, and then Rue helps her. They team together, and then Rue. I'm spoiling the movie; you haven't seen it. Okay, so then you know, then Rue passes away. Right, she gets killed, but Katniss tries to help her. Right, so what happens? District Eleven, Rue's district. There's an uprising. Right. And they also, they also like Katniss a lot too, right? So he's sort of like a, it's just like this uprising. So Katniss is already starting to spark some flames, right? Is there a, a upstarting? And so what happens is, um, what's the name again? Hamish. Hamish, right? So he, he basically um, starts convincing the administration, keep Katniss alive. Make it a love story. Twist it, you know? Spin it. Spin the story. Let, don't kill her off. Make it a love story. Okay, so they happen, this happens now. And then so at the end, there's basically like three people, right? There's who? Katniss. Katniss. Kato. And Peta, right? And they said these like vicious like dog things after them. So apparently like, everyone starts dying and Kato's left. And then Katniss and... Um, Peter work together, right? And so they're the two victors. And they announced, right, there's going to be two victors now if the same if they survive from the same district. Okay. So they do survive. But then what happens? JK. JK, right? <laughs> they flip it on them. They say, we're just kidding. <laughs> Kill each other. Right? That's what happens. And so what does Katniss do? Berries. Hmm? She gets the berries. What, what's the, what about the berries? Poisonous. They're poisonous. 
So she's like, we're gonna flip it on them now, okay? Who says there has to be one winner, right? And he's like, well, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna kill myself, right, basically. And she's like, what'd she say? Trust, Trust me, right? So she, she's got something in her head, right? Suicide's haram, by the way. <laughs> Again, I'm not condoning anything. It's, it's a serious bad, okay? Um, so they, um, what do they do? They're about to eat it, and what happens? They stop them, right? They're like, whoa, we have two winners. Congratulations, Hunger Games. Two winners, right? And they go back, and then what does say to Katniss after that? What does he say to her? You're in trouble. You're in trouble, why? Because you messed up the game. You messed up the game, right? Now, what does this remind you of during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's messing with everyone else's power. Like, everyone else in a good way, right? Yeah. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Because what happened was, is you have Mecca, right? And Mecca, you could consider it to be like Wall Street of Saudi Arabia at that time. <laughs> of Arabia at the time, right? Business hub. Things are going in, selling, things are going on. And they have a set tribal system. And they have a set, everything is set up. So this, this person, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, comes to them from their own people and starts saying, no, everybody's equal in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The only one who's better is who has more taqwa, right? More piety. That's who's better. What do you mean that's who's better? Right? We are the, we're the leaders of Quraysh. We're the leaders of Mecca. How are you better than me? He changed, flipped things over. You know? <coughs> so, but what happened? What eventually happened to Mecca? It changed, right? Prophet came back to Mecca and he, it all opened up peacefully. Right? So, you know, what I, what I mean to get by that is you see like, when you, when you do good works and you set good examples, you can still cause a change to society. You can, any, any one of you can make a big difference in your community, for your country, for your city, for your state, whatever it is. And always remember that. You, know, you have that potential. Um, we have our example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we can follow that. So, this brings us to the end of Hunger Games and Islam. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts today and to grant us Jannatul Firdaus and forgive our sins. Wa salamu ala al wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now, do we have any questions? Raphael. Okay, Raphael, can you come up? Can you come, you come up here? Do you want to come up here? Okay, this is Raphael Antigua, Lieutenant um, in the um, Army. Army. <laughs> He is also a fellow classmate of mine at Hartford Seminary, and he is studying to become a Muslim chaplain for uh, the U.S. military, inshallah. Okay. And um, so, do you have a question, Rafael? I just uh, I had a, something I wanted to mention in regards to the movie, uh, you were talking about the train ride. Yeah. The, the lady, uh, I don't know her name, the one that had, that had the wig. Effie. Effie. Effie, okay. <laughs> she, she tells both uh, the uh, male and female, Peter and Katniss, uh, that enjoy this while you can. Mm. You know about the, 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 how the train is temporary. Uh, mm. And he, she, she actually says that to them, that enjoy this while you can because it won't last very long. As mm. soon as you get to, the, once we get to the capital, you're going to have to leave this train. Yeah. You know, so uh, I just wanted to stress that in addition to, I thought it was interesting that uh, Katniss Mm. And that is a that's a, a pretty strong sunnah mm. in and of itself that we should uh, learn archery. Obviously, uh, for those of, that don't know, but uh, firing weapons, the gun, uh, if you would, uh, is an extension uh, technology-wise, is an extension of archery. Mm. Uh, so I would recommend everyone have the legally. <laughs> 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 Halo. <laughs>
especially if you're a citizen of this country. Call of Duty. Thank you. Uh, any other <coughs> comments, questions? Anything? No? Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.